Today it will be the first practical part of the series when based on analysis of black box logs I will show you how to compute the frequencies for uh, notch filters for gyroscope and uh, D-term and uh, using those computed frequencies actually not even computed just observed frequencies you will be able to enter those values into configurator or INAV or Betaflight or latest clean flight or whatever there is that allows to enter those frequencies and uh, make your quadcopter just uh, fly better. So let's go. What I have here is a short lock. It's only 33 seconds lock uh, showing how my quad this is quite a big machine uh, 600 millimeters motor to motor uh, behaves uh, when uh, there are no notch filters uh, the only filtering that is currently set up in this lock is uh, internal lpf of the, of the gyroscope well almost disabled because the cutoff frequency is set to 256 hertz and uh, low pass uh, filter on uh, gyroscope we can see this here there is only a low pass at 62 hertz nothing else if we take a look at the spectrum graph of for example roll axis you will see that row signal is uh, extremely polluted with uh, noise here at 150 hertz if we take a look at second axis also here somewhere along around 75 hertz uh, this is the main motor noise uh, because motors were rotating with the speed of approximately with, with the frequency of approximately 75 hertz and this is the both the harmonics and the noise that came from uh, propeller blades uh, air from propeller blades hitting the motor boom so extremely nice signal uh, like I said, right now the flight controller has only uh, LPF on um, gyroscope signal. There are no notches. If we open uh, filtered gyroscope trays, um, you know what? I think I will delete the debug because it's just taking too much space. Okay much better you will see that on the roll axis uh, some of the propeller noise uh, and harmonics uh, survived not that much uh, but if we open the gyro on pitch the main uh, main frequency also survived and uh, on your once again is the same if I will close the spectrum graph and zoom out a little, uh, we can observe that traces indeed are quite thick and uh, it doesn't look very good. Uh, the quad was flyable, maybe not perfectly flyable, uh, and there were some bad characteristics like uh, huge vibration maybe not vibration uh, wobble on this end and some nervous uh, flight and if i will open uh, the motor graph you will also notice that the signal that goes to motors it's also thick and uh, that means that the amount of energy the amperage the the waste power that motors consumed on trying to spin faster and then uh, slower is quite noticeable that is not very efficient drive and there is definitely something that uh, what we can fix how let's take a look to eliminate this unwanted gyroscope noise uh, we should once again take a look at the unfiltered gyroscope signal uh, let me display this and still please wait a second oh it's a bug probably someone probably me should fix that finally uh, okay um, so one more time uh, this is 
unfiltered gyroscope noise, total rubbish. Uh, we should see uh, the frequencies that are mainly affecting uh, our signal. Let's zoom it out so this is visible. So, uh, based on roll, there is a main peak at 148 Hz, which ends somewhere, let's say, at somewhere between 100 and 150, so uh, around 125 Hz. And on the pitch axis, if we will open, it's here, also at 147, let's assume this is 150 Hz, that also ends at 125. And this noise at probably somewhere more than 175, let's say that it's uh, sorry, more than 75, let's say it's 80 Hertz, and it ends here at more or less 60 Hertz. Um, congratulations, you just found out the notch filters frequencies and cutoff frequencies for gyro notch 1 and gyro notch 2. Simple, isn't it? So, uh, how will this affect uh, our signal? Um, let me open another lock. The lock I have here was recorded with uh, only notch uh, filter number one uh, in place. Um, so it was center of uh, center of the filter in 150 Hz and the cutoff frequency at 125 Hz. Uh, I will not show you the unfiltered gyro signal because it will look exactly like before, extremely polluted. Uh, but if we open the spectrum graph for the filtered uh, gyroscope signal and expand it and Oh, my PC is extremely slow today. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And zoom it. Okay, here. Please take a, please notice that the peak previously we had here uh, around 150 Hz is gone. It's completely gone. It's not visible uh, on roll. It's not visible on the pitch and it's not visible on the yaw axis either. What we just did, it's thanks, thanks to notch filter aimed at this 50 Hertz uh, bandwidth between 125 and 175 center at 150 Hertz, we virtually eliminated all the noise with, within this frequency range. And if we take a look at the trace of the gyro signal, uh, you will please notice that the, those lines already look slightly thicker. They look better. They are smoother. They probably uh, give better uh, flight experience. After we've eliminated this uh, one peak of noise at 150 Hz, let's see what else we can do. A uh, graph on roll doesn't give us any interesting information, but if we open this on the pitch axis and zoom in, this. This range I showed you already, somewhere centered around 80 Hz, going down to hard to tell 60 Hz. And this is the those are the values for the gyro notch to filter. Uh, I applied those values in the configurator with the gyro notch to a frequency of 80 Hz and a cutoff of 60 Hz when flying and recorded another lock. Let me open this. As you see, I named it notch to in place because right now on this new lock, both gyroscope notch filters will be applied to the signal. Uh, so, one more time, let's take a look. This is the same trace of the pitch, uh, only with both notches uh, in place. And 
see this is maximum zoom level this peak that was previously somewhere here I was ending somewhere here is almost completely gone there is still nothing on 50 hertz 150 hertz let's open yo some traces here around 80 but this is really it's undistinguishable from the background noise so we can easily ignore it and trace on roll clean um how was the copter behavior this may be in a second let me close this let me zoom out and please take a look how gyroscope traces looks like pretty thin surely much thinner than before and if we will open the first lock i show you when there were absolutely uh, no notches that i think that was oh, this one no notch please compare that oh, it looked like this but after applying both notch filters into gyroscope signal let me open the correct lock again it looked like this much thinner much better uh, that means the flight controller has uh, better quality of the gyroscope signal and the output that's fed to motors let's open motor graph 2 is much nicer there are less electricity wasted on attempts for uh, to spin the propeller faster than to slow down a millisecond later this is much better flying uh, uav uh, what was the flight experience um it was still wobbly uh, on fast descent but only on really fast descent and uh, please remember this is kind of big machine it uses 12 inch uh, props and it's kind of heavy mm, with gimbal and all those things and the frame is slightly flexible so it also complicates things uh, but really trust me the flight characteristics of this thing was much better than before you might remember from the second episode of this series that there is uh, one more notch filter uh, we can play with uh, it's the notch filter applied to the pid d term uh, which tries to smoothen some things that are happening with the d term uh, the same lock with both notches applied uh, to the gyroscope signal mm, let's see what's happening uh, on the determ side of things uh, this is pit roll pit pitch let's open determ on roll and zoom there is yeah, something here you see this valley here it's it's where the notch number two was applied here notch number one was applied but it's still uh, quite flat so we don't have to worry about there are no peaks with, in which we are interested so let's open the d term on pitch axis oh here it is you see there is still something here that we can uh, play with and um, frequency around 80 hertz once again down to 60 hertz and uh, 100 hertz so the frequencies uh, we should set up in the configurator are 80 and 60. Uh, i of course did that uh, went flying again and this is how it looked like what i have here is the lock uh, with all the notches applied uh, gyro one notch at 150 down to 120 hertz uh, gyro notch 2 at 80 hertz down to 60 hertz and determ notch from uh, 80 hertz also down to 60 hertz uh, let's see what's happening uh, on the determ uh, let me open the spectrum graph i really should invest in faster pc 
let's zoom in there are no peaks besides those flight frequencies let's open this on the pitch axis previously here around 80 we had a small peak of uh, the determ noise now it is gone it is completely gone uh, the line is mostly flat uh, let's see how other graphs looks like for example motors let's zoom out so this is visible um, it goes like this there are of course some tiny like like noise but this is this is quite quite nice quite tolerable uh, thin line uh, if we compare this please remember how it looks if we compare this with the case when there were uh, no notches at all here oh this is much thinner well, okay no this is much thicker uh, this is worse uh, the one with all the filters was really really much much better looking signal this is more or less how not filter tuning process looks like uh, get the good black box lock uh, of remember at least one kilohertz for mini quads and uh, 500 hertz for bigger machines then look at the peaks in the locks uh, on the unfiltered uh, gyroscope signal in my case that was pretty simple because there was peak at uh, 150 and there was peak at uh, 75 80 somewhere in between those peaks were pretty pretty steep so it was uh, simple to comp notice the center uh, frequency of this peak and when the peak goes down to the background noise and just get those values and enter them in the configurator uh, how to do it in the beta flight and INAV I will show you exactly in the next episode that I really hope that it will be recorded in the next two weeks and uh, I will also try to answer the question do we really need all the notch filters mm, because the answer is it depends uh, Joshua Bardwell already showed you that well based on of course based on uh, Boris B uh, post and experience that not every time we really need all the uh, notch filters because please remember that a year ago there were no, <laughs> no notch filters at all and mini quads were still flying uh, but in some cases they are uh, kind of useful thing and uh, worth investing time uh, in tuning.